Hello everyone, welcome to a series of interviews of Cyan with cybersecurity experts. Today we have one of the top experts in cybersecurity certification and testing. We have Razma Arabi, at, uh, who is managing director at AtSec. With Razma, we will discuss what uh, about AI and does it pass the EU cybersecurity test. Welcome, Razma. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and it's a, it's a really a pleasure to participate in this. Um, so just a few words about me. So I work for ATSEC, so International Independent Security Laboratory, and uh, I've actually been working uh, now for uh, 15 years for the company. And as correctly stated, so I started as an evaluator, so very much looking into uh, design documentation and testing products. And uh, over the time, I became responsible for the uh, evaluation lab and also now became the managing director of the Swedish office. Um, so I'm very much passionate about the new business development, and uh, we have some success stories as, as well to share, and I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to see how that goes. But just to mention a few, so we have uh, uh, been accredited and been established for a good business with the NASA, so within the telecom sector, uh, where we... Uh, evaluate and also audit uh, uh, various telecom vendors. And as well, we are establishing the IoT product certification business, so for example, with medical devices. Um, so just, uh, just a few words also on the EU-based work that I do. So I actively participate in multiple uh, standard organizations working groups uh, where I contribute. Uh, so just to name one of them is, for example, ENISA. So uh, ENISA is developing a scheme for 5G. And I'm also a member of the thematic group for NASA's. And I'm appointed as one of the two reporters. So basically the editors in the group. This is really impressive and I'm glad that you were able to share with us because it is uh, such a vast experience and I promise you to everyone that is watching us, um, it takes a lot of time uh, and it's often um, not only about sharing the technical knowledge, but also sharing the experience, learning from experience that very few experts have uh, in this rather young developing field. So we are very, very happy uh, to have you, but also very thankful for all your engagements to, at the EU level to help us uh, bring certification uh, on the table. I know you're part of the ad hoc working group on 5G uh, certification, but also uh, you mentioned something very, very interesting, um, which is very relevant also for our company, Cyan, the medical device and IoT certification. So definitely uh, we are keen on hearing more uh, on that. But before starting, just to understand from your vast expertise, um, what is AI for you? Is it more of an opportunity or a threat to cybersecurity? So I think obviously both, I would say. So, I mean, we as a company, I as an individual, we closely follow the new trends, including AI, and uh, see it as an opportunity to embrace. Uh, we are also in, um, in experimenting a lot with uh, promising AI software tools. So basically, for example, AI tools for content creation and other powered um, tools for like code analysis and other things. Um, also, I think that uh, artificial intelligence in general provides an excellent opportunity for training. So for various public standards, such as uh, common criteria, FIPS, GSMA, NASA, so, I mean, it, it really has it all to enable personalized learning in, in intelligent tutoring systems or any kind of automated content creation. So, I mean, everything is there. Um, I think it's also important, another aspect is important is that the, our customers are also uh, considering AI. Uh, so just later, a couple of customers explicitly asked us not to use uh, generative AI tools. So more or less the chat GPT or similar tools uh, for security analysis of the products. And uh, this is obviously for a reason for not to prevent uh, a leaking uh, their sensitive 
confidential data as well as personal data. And um, I mean, these tools would be considered as unauthorized third party and more or less would mean the uh, breach of the NDAs. Um, so I think it's very important to check what the tools can do, what the, especially those powered with the machine learning, how they handle uh, the provided input data. And uh, I mean, in case there are any risks, so we must consider kind of a AI free or AI safe tools to preserve the, the confidentiality of the information of the customers. Um, so um, just to mention one of the uh, measures that we internally did, and I think it could be also important for the other companies as well. So created a company-wide policy um, to determine if, how, and when uh, AI uh, should be used within the company in a kind of in a legitimate way. And uh, obviously this policy is derived from the customer requirements. This is very interesting and probably many would be very curious to know um, what are typical accepted use uh, for AI in the context of uh, security and certification. Um, could you give us examples uh, where it's mostly uh, okay and most beneficial to use AI? Yes, so so I think it's very important to consider the uh, customer information. So as long as uh, as long as you don't share any customer um, uh, information, that is okay. I mean, for example, we are participating in various research projects as well. So such re research could be uh, very much public, uh, or we are researching on public information. So then the AI use is uh, legitimate; it can be used. On the other hand, as you can imagine, we may be evaluating or testing um, customer products. So we don't want to share any information about that, especially if we don't know really what the input and how the input that we provide to such tools would be handled by the tool itself. And uh, if there would be any kind of potential for, for um, information leakage or anything like that. So we understand there is a potential to use it more, but we have to frame in which cases it is okay. Probably you mentioned the third party. Uh, indeed, most cases AI is de developed by big com corporations, or at least this is what we see uh, as users. But we do have a lot, especially in the in the medical sector, uh, custom made, home developed AIs. So Rasma, do you see AI already utilized as a threat? Do you see AI employed to break security of the products and services that you uh, work and certify? Yeah, so actually it is really an interesting question. So um, I think w w um, the, the threat is, uh, uh, is something that is called now offensive AI. Uh, so more or less what you could actually also see that the AI could be used for malicious purposes. So basically uh, as a deep fake technology and uh, the phishing attacks and things like that. And also, I mean, the, the AI could be also used against the AI systems as well. Um, so more or less, I think I just read an exa uh, interesting example or an article uh, that was saying that you will need the AI to fight AI in the future. So this is really kind of an interesting uh, uh, concept of that I, I find. So I understand cybersecurity is moving to another level. If we were struggling now with human errors, uh, simple tasks, uh, putting in place proper procedures. Now we also have to focus on developing AI uh, for securing our systems. But is this AI that we have today on the market passing the EU cybersecurity test, is it secure? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, hard to tell. Um, I'm not aware of any cybersecurity tests that have been done that are publicly available. Uh, there are definitely no kind of certifications of the AI systems just yet. Um, I think what we have seen during the summer, so we have seen some example of complaints uh, about some AI systems. So that is more or less from the GDPR, um, uh, so EU privacy laws basically related complaints 
uh, where we have seen the, some reports made in Spain and France. Uh, uh, we also had a, a temporary ban in Italy. Um, so that's, I, I think there are a lot of things that are going on. Uh, one thing is that the European Commission, uh, rather, I would say, rather early, started to already a few years ago, started working on this EU regulatory framework for AI. And just to analyze the different applications of the AI and classify, as we talked already, about the different risks that they can pose to the users. Um, so, and I think this is more or less that the different risks will also um, uh, will mean more or less regulations on this application of the AI. Uh, I think, interestingly enough, it, it is foreseen, at least in this regulation, uh, the one that the uh, European Parliament is working on, that the AI systems should be overseen by people rather than by automation to prevent the harmful outcomes. So this is basically, again, we are going back to this AI versus the um, AI situation. But um, I mean, uh, um, so securing AI systems, I think it's uh, uh, it's uh, we need to address similar um, concerns as for any other IT system as well. So we need to take care of the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of those systems um, throughout the life cycles. And basically then to consider various aspects. So how data is collected, what kind of models are used, uh, how these uh, systems are tested, deployed, how those updated. Um, also, as uh, you just asked, I mean, there are a number of different attacks against the AI system. So, for example, the poisoning attacks, the input attacks, reverse engineering. Uh, so poisoning attacks, for example, would be if you have a if the attacker seems to compromise the AI system model and normally during the training already, and then that would somehow affect the, uh, the behavior of the deployed model in a specific way. Um, also, I think there is interesting the reverse engineering attack. So where the attacker aims to reveal the um, internal logic and algorithms and parameters of the AI. And this is also something is to be used in order to influence the outcome or influence also to see what kind of the parameters are there in the AI systems. So it's a rather complex uh, uh, situation, very uh, as any other, I would say, situations as well uh, for, for any other IT systems as well but uh, but it's very challenging and I, I find it very kind of interesting well, um we've seen obviously the ransomware the phishing those are the typical quick win attacks and attackers they're still very um lazy if i might say they use the easiest way uh, to get um break into the system but this could very well uh, be a different discussion depending on the threat landscape and currently being in a cyber war situation might also completely change what we consider risk and immediate risk and the work of NEC in that respect. With the annual threat landscape, I think it's very, very important to be able to navigate policymakers, but businesses and experts alike of what are really the immediate and feasible risk and scenarios. For this, it's very important also to have standard so that when we build systems we also know what is the level of security or what is the level of performance expected standardized where, where are we uh, what is the state of play of ai standards and certification um yeah so uh, as i mentioned so as we saw so we have the european commission already working on the on the first eu regulations and frameworks for ai um, I think also there are similar initiatives also in other countries as well. So uh, just to mention the National Institute of Standards and Technology, so NIST in the U.S., uh, also looking into um, into artificial intelligence technologies and systems. And uh, they also basically are defining rules on how to trust the design, how to, uh, how to use and how to govern uh, such systems. Um, so I think that there, are, there is a lot of work going on. I think also it's uh, it's really important that uh, very um, um, vital aspects have been looked at already. So I mean, uh, what both the EU and the NIST are looking into is how basically trustworthiness aspects, so kind of validity, reliability of the results, the safety, security, and resilience, 
uh, transparency aspects. Uh, there are quite a few aspects of ethics as well and privacy. So um, I think these kind of all the essential building blocks are already being considered. Uh, so I would not be surprised that uh, in the near future we will uh, see um, these regulations being published and adopted, um, as well as certification schemes or rules on how to assess AI systems or products with AI components in the near future. Um, I think it's uh, also important kind of to mention that uh, requirement fragmentation should be avoided as we have now different bodies, different uh, jurisdictions uh, more or less working on similar um, on, on, on similar items. And I think that the cooperation among the uh, various stakeholders and legislators is uh, more than encouraging. So uh, I think it's uh, now it's kind of the time to act and and to align. Great. You mentioned earlier the use cases where you might want to employ AI uh, in your work. But um, if you could summarize how could AI impact um, your work, but also in general, the test labs and certification bodies? Yes. So I think that the, one of the main benefits of uh, AI and cybersecurity is the ability to automate, it, automate the repeating tasks. So basically monitoring, analyzing network activity, identifying potential threats, responding to them. So that is a real good use case for the AI. Um, also, I think that the AI is impacting cybersecurity through machine learning as well. So uh, what we can expect, and we will, I'm sure we will see that there will be uh, machine learning al al algorithms that can analyze basically huge amounts of data and identify patterns for detecting and preventing cyber attacks. So that's more or less of an AI, um, AI systems and products that will be deployed by the um, different organizations. So I think these are the um, the main applications of the AI that are very much obvious. Uh, now, when it comes to the um, security labs and their certification bodies, I think that there will be use cases as well. So for example, I mean, using the AI tools, so for say penetration testing. So I can imagine that the, there will be um, uh, basically machine learning um, powered AI tools uh, that will allow to do penetration testing in a much more uh, uh, e efficient way that will be able to both uh, say detect uh, the possible attacks or CVEs uh, uh, and as well to uh, possibly execute some penetration tests. Um, now, I think this goes back a little bit to the discussion that we had in the very beginning about the confidentiality of the data. I mean, obviously, special care needs to be taken when uh, uh, when deploying such tools, either internally or externally, not to kind of um, uh, breach any NDAs and not disclose any information that should not otherwise be disclosed. So more or less, AI tools should be treated the same way as all the other tools are treated. Indeed, I can put a moment for commercial, but I'm working with the tool which actually um, makes it smoother the process of vulnerability management with machine learning for identification of vulnerabilities that are more critical than others. And this is definitely one of the areas where you mentioned the big data analysis, the collection, the let's say processing of all these vulnerabilities data for companies, but probably even more difficult for for labs uh, for national authorities which would um, play a role of kind of a catalog and, and a uh, source of information but this is about today and what we are trying to do how do you see ai developing in 10 years where would we be in 10 years if you have a crystal ball we know you don't but at your best effort, what is the best informed guess? Uh, well, I think the opportunities we uh, with AI are still emerging. Uh, also, the risk are indeed is still emerging as well. So I think we have had quite a few new technologies recently or in the recent years. So basically, in the past decade, you know, like the big data and the cloud and quantum computing and more basically that uh, uh, that, that are developing. So I think it's uh, uh, embracing the technology really uh, it makes it necessary. To 
to accept the risk. And uh, it's important to kind of embrace these opportunities that the AI will um, and that AI will present, but also to have this um, framework to manage the AI risk. So I think it's it, it's really important. I think that AI has a bright future to grow. I mean. Uh, 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 we have seen, and most likely you have also seen this Armageddon uh, articles in the in the newspapers and the other kind of uh, um, uh, on on the TV as well, uh, where people are afraid of the AI. Uh, I would say that it will develop significantly, and I mean it will change different sectors. So we will see definitely more AI in uh, uh, education and the health sector, in transportation, with self driving vehicles, and so much more. Um, I think for the AI and cybersecurity, so I, I, um, I would envision that the AI algorithms will continue to evolve, allowing enterprises to kind of to benefit from these advanced threat detection, proactive threat hunting and intelligence um, uh, security automation. So you see more AI, not less. And um how about you yourself so we are inviting everyone to follow you uh you share a lot of interesting information and have very very topical project at hand but what are your professional objectives for the next one to three years and what can people contact you uh for or support follow you Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I see future with my company, as you heard. So I've been kind of traditional staying with the same company for so, so many years now. Um, so I think that ATSIC is kind of in a very good position to be uh, independent, agile, and international. So our focus has remained unchanged for 23 years. Uh, uh, so basically, information security. Uh, we don't do kind of no power play, no politics, strictly focus on the sp subject of uh, information security. So I think this is what the uh, three founders envisioned for uh, for ATSEC. And this is what I in Sweden, along with my colleagues, is all, also continuing to um, to work on both in Germany, US, China and Italy. Uh, I think uh, a, an interesting observation for this is that uh, our focus, our company focus on the AI, so information assurance. So if you invert the letters and you get actually the AI instead. So um, I think also another thing that is expected somehow that the AI will be used for better, faster decision making. So uh, also I think I expect that our company will be uh, bigger and better, not sure how much bigger, but definitely even better. So with or without the AI, I'm sure that we will uh, we have a bright future with the, all these emergence, uh, emerging new technologies. And we honestly see that just as, as, as a new possibilities for us. We'll follow you and I invite everyone to subscribe to our channel uh, to be the first one to know of other topical interviews we have planned for you in the future. Thank you, Razma.